Hey peeps, this is Andrew Collin. I think my insides are cooking just standing here. So, you got a nice shop set up, but you want to start working with some uh, advanced toys, like a Tesla coil or teleporter. Uh, you're going to need a lot more power than just a bunch of uh, solar panels. I recommend making a nuclear reactor. So, here's all the stuff you're going to need to make a nuclear reactor. It takes two reactor chambers, a generator, four advanced alloys, and two advanced circuits. So we're going to start with a, uh, a reactor chamber. You'll need 21 refined iron, 18 copper dust, 21 copper bars, a 6 tin dust, 12 tin, 6 rubber, 2 lapis lazuli, 2 glowstone dust, uh, 6 redstone, and 2 empty cells. Uh, to make empty cells, you'll need four tin. Just take the tin and uh, put it in a diamond shape like this, and it'll give you 16 empty cells. That's plenty. You'll, uh, you won't need any more than that for a whole reactor until you start making components to go into the reactor. The first thing you'll need to make with all this stuff is bronze. So take your 18 copper dust and split it up into three. This will be six. So six little stacks of, or three little stacks of six. Then take your tin dust, put it in the corner there, and this will make bronze. Go ahead and cook all your, of your bronze. After your bronze is done, uh, combine it with uh, your 12 tin and 12 refined iron. You'll need four in each spot, with the refined iron at the top, all of the tin along the bottom, and uh, all of the bronze in the middle. This will make mixed metal ingots. You'll get eight of those. And go ahead and throw those in the compressor. This will give you eight advanced alloys. Next, you'll have to upgrade four of these to integrated reactor plates. So keep four of them just as advanced alloy. Put the advanced alloy in the middle and uh, surround it on the four sides with copper. And this will give you integrated reactor plating. Next you'll want to upgrade one of these to an integrated heat disperser. To do that you're going to need a advanced circuit. So we'll start with some copper wire and it'll give you six copper then you have to make a regular circuit out of that. Put it back in the middle. Surround it on the left and right with lapis, the bottom and top with glowstone dust, and in the four corners uh, with redstone. This will give you an advanced circuit. Then you want to take these two buckets and uh, two empty cells. You want to combine the water bucket with the empty cell, and it'll give you a water cell. Do that with both water cells. Then put those in an extractor. Now once they extract, they will not stack, so you'll have to split them up and put them in two different ones, or wait on it. Next, you want to combine the advanced circuit with two coolant cells, an integrated reactor plating, and your last two copper. That'll give you your integrated heat disperser. Then, you'll want to make a machine block. Put that back in the middle, uh, put the integrated heat disperser at the top, and the integrated reactor platings on the right, the bottom, and left. Then take your four advanced alloys and put them in the remaining corners. And it'll give you a reactor chamber. To make a nuclear reactor, you're going to need two reactor chambers, so you'll have to repeat that whole process again. Now to, the make, uh, to make the reactor chamber, you'll have to combine your two nuclear reactors with four advanced alloy, two advanced circuits, and a generator. So you'll need nine copper dust, three tin dust, eight refined iron, 6 tin, 6 copper, 12 rubber, 12 redstone, 4 lapis, 
four glowstone, and a generator. First, we're going to make the four advanced alloy. So, take your nine copper dust and split it into three stacks of three, and combine that with your tin dust. That'll give you six bronze dust. And go ahead and cook that. After your bronze is done cooking, you'll have to combine it with refined iron and tin. So, set out your bronze and your refined iron and your tin, like so, to get mixed metal ingots. And go ahead and throw those in the compressor. This will give you your four advanced alloys, and you don't need to do anything more with those yet. Next, you have to make two advanced circuits. So, start with making a couple regular circuits with a bunch of copper wire, two refined iron, four glowstone or redstone. Here's your two electronic circuits. Once again, your lapis your glowstone dust, and your redstone. And there's your two electronics, uh, advanced circuits. Now you've got all the parts you need to make a nuclear reactor. So, advanced circuit on the top and bottom, generator in the middle, two reactor chambers, one on the left and one on the right, and your, your advanced alloy in the four corners. This will give you a nuclear reactor. Now a nuclear reactor won't make any energy on its own. You'll have to combine it with a bunch of components in order to get it to produce any energy. But we'll go ahead and uh, set it up and I'll, uh, I'll show you its interface. I got a spot for this uh, already uh, set up upstairs. And there's a wire you can hook it up to. So I'm just going to slap it down here. And this is the nuclear reactor interface. You can put components inside of it, and it'll produce power and heat. And if it overheats too much, uh, the and components will melt, and the reactor could explode and make quite a huge crater. So uh, I'll show you how to make all the stuff you can put into this. This is uranium. It uh, looks like any other ore except for a um, pretty color green. And it drops this round uranium ore. To make a safe, non-exploding nuclear reactor, you're going to need 10 refined iron, 9 copper dust, 6 tin, 3 tin dust, 24 copper, 24 redstone, 8 lapis, 8 glowstone, 12 empty cells, and 2 uranium ores. Start by making uh, 4 integrated reactor plates. That starts with bronze. So go ahead and cook your bronze. And then combine your bronze with uh, 6 tin and 6 refined iron. And you'll get four mixed metal ingots. And throw those back in the compressor again. And this will give you your four advanced alloy. Go ahead and upgrade these to integrated reactor plates by throwing them in the middle, surrounding them with uh, copper. And I'll go ahead and show you what these do before I upgrade them to integrated heat dispersers. So, you'll need a couple of uranium, and you want to put that in your compressor. And this will give you refined uranium bars. Combine your two refined uranium bars with two empty cells, and that'll give you uranium cells. They don't stack. Next, you want a couple uh, coolant cells. So, Combine them with some water with an empty cell to get a water cell. And you're going to want two of these. And throw those into the extractor. And this will give you coolant cells. So we're going to go upstairs. And I'm going to throw these into this nuclear reactor. Now you want this uh, in the center of an empty 3x3x3 three by three by three area. Uh, that's so it can be properly cooled. So go ahead and throw the coolant cells in the into the reactor and a couple integrated uh, reactor plates. Well, let's just put one in there for now. 
So here's your uranium cell, and this will immediately start making power. Now, what the integrated reactor plating does is take heat from the uranium cells that it produces and passes it on to anything that's touching the uh, integrated reactor plates. In this core, in this case, it's coolant cells. Now you can throw in up to two in here and next to each other, and it'll pass that heat. Uh, through to this next plate and then onto whatever it's touching, but only too deep. If you put a third in here, it would ignore it. So we're going to go ahead and empty this out because you're going to want to upgrade these to uh, integrated heat dispersers next. To do that, you're going to need four advanced circuits. So we're, we'll start with copper. Now I'm going to need some more cables, copper cables. So just always have some spare on hand. So here's my electronic circuits. And upgrade those up to advanced circuits. And you'll need four of these. And next you're going to want to make uh, eight more coolant cells. Now that I've got all these coolant cells, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade all my reactor plating. And it takes your uh, reactor plates, two coolant cells, advanced circuit, and some copper. Two copper each. Too bad uh, you can't stack all this stuff. It It's a slight pain. Alright, now that I've got all the pieces done, uh, we're going to go back to the reactor here, and the important thing is cooling. As long as your reactor stays cool and doesn't you know, overheat, it won't explode. So it can be cooled internally and externally by a bucket of water on the outside. And it's getting everything but these ones here. So I'll have to probably stick a bucket here, and it's going to go everywhere. Alright, I got my reactor surrounded by water in a 3x3 three three area, 3 tall, with it in the center. And that, that'll that take care of the outside cooling. And next will be the inside cooling. So, go ahead and put these integrated reactor plating in here. And uh, you probably want to play around with how you got this stuff set up, just to make sure it works well. Uh, let's see, I want this here and that there. And... This one there, and that one there. And the two uranium cells in the center here. Alright, so I'll explain what everything does. The uranium cells, uh, they produce your energy. And by themselves, like say off right here, they'll produce five energy units a tick per uranium cell you got in here. However, if you've got them right next to another uranium cell, they'll make extra energy. Uh, this one is making 15 total. Uh, well, actually, no, this should be making 20, because uh, this is right next to it, it'll pulse twice to give 10. And this is right next to another one, it'll pulse twice to make another 10. So this will make uh, 20 energy units a tick. Also, the coolant cells uh, will absorb energy and pretty much remove energy from the system. The integrated heat dispersers will absorb energy and transport them to the reactor's hull. Uh, or to other integrated heat dispersers. For instance, these ones are getting uh, heat. These ones could be off a ways away, and they will absorb the heat uh, from the hull and put them back out to any components that they're touching. I want it like that. Heat is produced by the uranium cells. Now, if I set this up like so, uh, they will be, it will put out one heat into every component next to it. If I took something out, it would have only three uh, components next to it, and each uh, component would absorb two heat instead of one. If I put a uranium cell next to it, it counts as an empty space. So my heat's being absorbed by the coolant cells and removed from the system, and each coolant cell will remove one heat. 
and every unit of uh, every spot around the reactor within a 3x3x3 area that has a piece of water in it will absorb one heat per tick as well. Now if it's got air in it, it'll absorb uh, 0.1 units of heat, so air is always near as good as water. And this reactor produces 20 units of energy a tick, and it'll be pretty good for us starting a reactor. It'll get you going. This particular setup will never explode, and you could refill it uh, as soon as your uranium cells are done using themselves up. Uh, uranium cell will last about two and a half hours, maybe two hours and 45 minutes. Uh, as is, this will produce four million units of energy. Just one alone should produce one million units of energy. But uh, these are making better use of uranium cells since they're right next to each other, and they'll give extra energy. But the nuclear reactor is upgradable by using extra reactor chambers. Now you can put these on all six sides. So I'm, I've made three. So I'm going to put, uh, put them right over here. And one there. And I feel like putting one underneath. So I'll go ahead and pop this. And uh, drop it down there. Now each uh, reactor chamber will give you an extra uh, a whole entire set of slots. So I put on three chambers and it gives me a whole bunch of extra squares. So you can make a bigger, better reactor with a bigger setup. Now each reactor chamber will also uh, take the place of a water block but it'll absorb I think twice as much heat. So I got my reactor going but uh, say you want to turn the thing off. Oh, well you just power with a bit of redstone or a switch and it'll turn off. And uh, that way if you, you have a really dangerous setup in here and it overheats too quickly, more than it takes for it to run out of uranium, you can turn the thing off uh, mid-cycle. Or if you already filled up your energy storage device and just wanted to top it off. I went ahead and made some more components and this is my preferred uh, reactor setup uses 21 coolant cells, 10 integrated heat dispersers, and 4 uranium cells. It produces 50 energy units a tick, and uh, you can run this until the uranium cells use, them, use themselves up and it won't explode. Uh, there's a couple things to note though. You need to have your water source block up 2 or 3, in this case it's 3 high, because if it gets too hot it'll start evaporating the water. And if it evaporates the water source block, it'll just make uh, all the water disappear and it'll overheat even, even faster. But if it's uh, a couple extra blocks away, it can't reach it. Now, if this thing ever gets super hot, say uh, 9,000 degrees or hotter, it'll start melting all of the blocks and they'll start turning to lava. But uh, with this setup, it'll never get that hot. The hottest this will get is about a little over 6,000 heat, and uh, all the components will be uh, a little over halfway. It'll be uh, they'll their bar will start turning a deep red. Now, if the components ever overheat, they'll completely disappear, but they have to be uh, 10,000 heat to burn up. Now, through experience. Uh, I know you can get more power out of a nuclear reactor, especially out of uh, especially if you put extra chambers on it. But it's more energy efficient, or more resource efficient anyway, if you just produce a whole bunch of different reactors if you need that much power. Uh, in one of my other maps, I've actually got three of these reactors sitting right next to each other. Uh, but they have one uh, gap uh, block between them and they share all this, uh, a lot of the same source blocks of water. And it works great. But I know what you're thinking. You want to see these things explode. You want to see the giant crater of doom and all sorts of death and destruction. Well, you have to join me for another episode for that one. Because I'm going to do that a little later. So, join me next time, and we'll get to see some big-ass craters. My spleen! <laughs>